All right, back now to our coverage of SpaceX now returning to Earth. Mission accomplished, mission, mission successful. The third time does seem to be the charm this morning as takeoff, liftoff occurred, oh, about 45 minutes ago. This is expected to splash into the Indian Ocean. Eventually, the plan is to carry NASA astronauts to the moon. Dan Riskin is joining me now, CTV science and tech expert. Dan, this has just been incredible this morning. And even if you didn't understand what was happening with the pictures, all you had to do was listen to the sounds coming from Mission Control, all those super excited scientists applauding and cheering. Uh, what does this mean for space travel? Uh, this is great news for space travel. It's not just about SpaceX, uh, it's about NASA and their ability to go to the moon. So we did Artemis 1, which was an unoccupied spacecraft that went around the moon and came back. Artemis 2, coming up very soon with Jeremy Hansen, the Canadian, who's going to be going up around the moon and coming back. But the plan to land on the moon and get out of the spaceship and walk around and get back in the spaceship and come back to Earth, that is all predicated on this Starship technology that SpaceX has been uh, hired to provide to NASA, and they haven't had a successful mission until today with those starships. They've done two test missions, both of which have had to self-destruct. On the first one, the self-destruct button did not work for a while, so it self-destructed much later than anticipated. But today, no self-destruct button. Uh, the mission is not yet complete. It is still uh, doing some maneuvers over the Earth, uh, testing its ability to withstand some of the aerodynamic uh, forces that it's going to suffer when it comes back into Earth's orbit after a mission to the moon. Um, but so far, it's it's passed with flaming colors, uh, and it looks amazing, and uh, the, the cheering is, is well warranted. So what do you think they learned, uh, particularly from that second explosion uh, last spring? Yeah, you know, it's it's the first the first explosion really what the first thing they learned was that they needed to build a stronger base for this thing to take off from. They just about just left a crater where this thing took off from. I mean, it, this thing is so big. You don't get a feeling for it because on TV rocket launches all look like, you know, a rocket's a rocket's a rocket, but this thing's the size of like if you've ever been up to the 35th floor of a building and stood on a balcony and looked down, that's how big this rocket is. It's like a 35-story building. And so to, to have this huge thing accelerate up into the sky, go faster than the speed of sound, and then go at these crazy speeds, and then go all the way from Texas to crashing over the in the Indian Ocean about an hour later, a little more than an hour later, that is a, a lot of force that has to get generated. And so they're learning how to make this thing work and how to get it to do the things they need it to do. Uh, some of the, the uh, yeah, engines the didn't engine turn on when it did that second mission. Away. All the engines turned on this time. It has the the booster rocket separated when it was supposed to. There were audible gasps, uh, not only in the feed, but I was watching with other people, and we were all gasping out loud as well. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's glorious stuff to see. And then this thing is, uh, you know, once it completes its mission, its plan is to splash down in the Indian Ocean, but. On that flight, they're testing a couple of things like opening and closing the bay doors that could release satellites and, and testing a, a system that's supposed to work for passing uh, rocket fuel from one container to another so that down the road they could use that technology to refill a rocket that's in orbit around Earth. And so lots of exciting stuff in this test and yeah. uh, it's nice to see that they're having success. And, and it's fun to watch when it goes well. And this is not the only test that SpaceX wants to do on this, as I understand it, Dan. They want to have like at least 10 of them under their belt. Yeah, they, I mean, you don't put people on for the fourth flight when the first two blew up, right? Like one, you, you, you just want to make sure not only for from an engineering perspective of how confident you are that you've got it all figured out, but you also, you know, from the psychological perspective, um, you know, you want to make sure, NASA wants to make sure that if we're going to put humans on top of one of these things, that everybody feels like we're it's ready. And, you know, they definitely did a lot of tests with the, uh, the Falcon 9 rockets that are now used to take people up to the International Space Station. This needs to be a technology that people trust before they're going to feel good about having their astronauts put on top of this thing. Um, and, you know, there are things that can vary from day to day. So one good launch doesn't mean you've got all the things worked out. What happens if there's a gust of wind? What happens if it hits a seagull? I mean, I'm sure a seagull would not make a big impact on this, but there are all these little variables that they have to know about. And, and so the more tests they get under their belt, the safer everybody's going to feel about this. But you need to have one success to start with, and this is the first success. So it's yeah. a great day for SpaceX and a great day for space exploration. Yeah, they're going to be having a party tonight, a big Absolutely. celebration. And to your point about safety, 
they were delayed just a teeny bit. They had to move some wayward boats away for safety reasons. Yes. It stands to reason, doesn't it? Yes, but they still managed to launch on Pi Day 314, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's a day that everybody gets to celebrate the mathematical constant. And so you can think of it as a day for engineers and scientists to celebrate what they do. And so I, I think it's fitting. It's Einstein's birthday. It's Pi Day. And here we have this rocket launch. It's just like the perfect storm. I'm really glad that it went well. Oh, Dan, you are, you are showing off your science background big time now with bringing in Pi Day. It is Pi Day. It is Pi Day. Oh, Dan Riskin for us. Always great to have you with us, Dan. Really appreciate it.